Hey, my name's Zach, and this is my little video tutorial on how to fix dead keys on the Nord Electro 2. So, if you want to skip ahead in the video, I put some little links in the description so you can go to whatever part of the video you need to um, for seeing whatever step of the process that you're that you're into. Uh, this seems to be a pretty common problem with the Nord Electro. I've been kind of trolling around on the forums for a while and seeing that a lot of people tend to do have this problem with notes dying or being unpredictable. So the symptoms of this problem are that a note is either going to like make no sound at all or the note is going to be full volume, like 127 velocity. This is going to sound really bad on almost any of the Nord's built-in sounds. Um, if you're using the organ primarily in uh, organ mode, you may not even notice this, this problem happens because uh, since the organ's not velocity sensitive, the notes are still going to work. Uh, basically, all the all the problems come down to this part. Uh, this is a Fatar bubble contact strip, and uh, this makes contact with the board. So when you press a note, these two things touch the circuit board. And the difference in time between these touching is what determines uh, the velocity that you're playing the note. So, basically, um, if the rubber is torn and one part never touches, the note's going to sound dead in piano mode. It's going to have a velocity of zero. Now, if there's something in there, um, this is worse because it's going to touch and you're going to hear the note, but it's going to be full velocity. And if that's like the member of a chord or something like that, this sounds absolutely horrible, especially on the uh, like the road sound. Uh, there's no way for this to sound good. So um, we're going to go through. I've got two dead keys on the instrument right now. One is the F around middle C. One is the F sharp um, in the very lowest register. Now these notes tend to go out in the middle C register. I've had four dead notes. I know this this keyboard was toured regularly before I bought it for a couple years, so I don't know exactly what this was subjected to. I've had it for about six, uh, using it several times a week, and it seems like uh, about every maybe two years or so, a, a new note will start dying, um, and always around middle C. So that kind of suggests to me that it's from overuse or something like that. Like you've played the note too much and it just starts going. Uh, it tends to not kind of happen like that. It tends to be uh, kind of wonky for a couple weeks. Like you'll start to notice the note's working and then all of a sudden it'll be dead for a little while. And then maybe if you're panicked and you're on a gig, you'll repeat that note a bunch, you know, between tunes with your volume down and then the note will start working again. Or then all of a sudden that note's gonna be way too sensitive, it's gonna be like full volume every time you press it, and then it'll go back to normal. So if this starts happening to you, do fix the problem, because this is the kind of thing, it tends to not ever get better on its own. And it's a super easy repair, there's no reason that you shouldn't do this on your own. Um, I'm sure that doing this probably voids your warranty or something, but if you're like me, you, you never had one to begin with. So that's, uh, it's about the size of it. This part is about, I think it's six bucks, five ninety nine on the MIDI store. It's a um, twelve note contact strip, and uh, you're gonna need. A, I'll show you how you can cut this down. Like if you've only got a few notes um, that they're dead and you want to conserve it, like I think you can actually replace sections of four notes at a time. Uh, so, because you'll see here, there are these little lines that you can cut down. That's actually why I have a note dead in the low register, is that um, I didn't have time to uh, get this properly fixed. I, I needed it um, for a performance, and so I moved a dead C sharp from the middle register of the piano down to the bass, because I knew that I was going to use the C sharp a lot more than the F sharp. Um, now, uh, so you'll see me replace that bass uh, note and the treble note. Now there's actually uh, two different parts of the instrument for bass and treble um, notes. So you'll you'll see me do both um, so that can help you out depending on where your dead note is. Um, if you're like the majority of people I've ever talked to though, it's probably going to be in the treble side of the instrument. Um, but it's all the same whatever part of the keyboard you're in. So uh, I hope this video is helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Uh, let's Let's get into the repair. Okay, so here's a short demo of this problem. Uh, first, before we get on to fixing it, uh, I'm gonna put the organ uh, mode on here so you can hear. Uh, there's nothing going wrong here. All the notes are sounding the way they should. 
However, as soon as I switch this over into the uh, like piano mode, you're gonna notice a real absence of F natural here. So how is this happening? Like, why is it making a sound in organ mode and then just dead in piano? Um, if you were like me, you would assume something on the software the Nord is screwed up. That's actually not the case. I'm gonna show you the computer so we can dig in a little more into what's going on here. Okay, here I am in Apple's main stage. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to hold this as still as I can. But I'm gonna hit this F, and you see um, it's coming in with a velocity of one, that uh, that where it's saying off and one, that's showing you the velocity of the note, and you'll see all the neighboring notes are gonna respond predictably, except that one. So, this is going to sound horrible in a scale or any other kind of passage, or in a chord. I mean, it's gonna you're gonna really notice and miss the F. Now, you'll notice here that I'm seeing F um, every single time I'm playing a chord. I'm gonna play several. Why am I only seeing F? Now this thing can only display one note at once, so I mean it's kind of obvious, but you'll notice that F is displaying every single time that I play this uh, D flat chord. Now why is that happening? Well, it's because the F is actually hitting after all of the other notes. So that's really frustrating. At first I thought I could compensate for this in software with a velocity curve. Just say that whenever F comes in, just put it at a velocity of 80. But that totally doesn't work because the F is so delayed. Um, you'll notice if you if you actually do this, it's infuriating. There's a ton of latency on that F. So the only way to actually make up for it is to um, to actually fix the physical problem on the instrument. Okay, so the first screws that you're going to want to take out of this keyboard are um, these on this side. But for right now, let's only take off the um, uh, screws that are closest uh, to us um, if we were sitting like a player the instrument. So um, I'm going to screw this. And this is going to look different uh, for you. Before I bought the keyboard, uh, somebody did something to it and stripped out these uh, these holes. So I kind of had to improvise with some different uh, size screws to get things uh, to actually fit in there. But um, So we take out this one, and uh, we're going to take out this screw on this side as well. And unfortunately, my screwdriver is not magnetized, so getting these screws out might actually be something I do away from the camera. So just turn, um, we're going to rotate these ones facing the back of the instrument just a little bit because our idea is, is that we can, we're going to want this screw to still be in there. We're going to open the instrument up uh, like, a, like a hinge. Okay, now we've got the keyboard flipped around. Uh, we're going to just take out these five screws back here. Okay, so this is... Um, kind of what uh, attaches this top red part here. So I'm going to do that as best I can one-handed and see if I need to put the phone down. And I would add as well when you're doing this, um, I have an electric screwdriver, but I am not using it now. It would probably make this part of the video a lot less frustrating to watch, but um, I'm doing this for a reason. It's super easy to like over tighten uh, and strip these screws and you're gonna really wish that you hadn't done that if, if you do that. Especially when we're actually doing things on the board like when we get down and we're replacing the contacts. I really recommend that you uh, are really careful and use uh, just a manual plain old Phillips head screwdriver because it, um, it is totally possible to crack the, uh, the board if you're using a electric screwdriver. Okay, with the two front side screws out, um, we're going to flip over the keyboard and uh, undo some screws on the underside. Now, this is really important. Make sure that you haven't removed the back screws. Only loosen them, okay? What we're about to do on the back of the keyboard is uh, we're going to unscrew a lot of things that keep this top support part um, attached. And uh, if you've just taken out all the screws, uh, as soon as you unscrew those screws on the back, you're going to dump this onto the floor. You're going to really regret that because that's definitely going to tear a connector. So please make sure that you've left some, some of these screws intact here. So um, let, let me flip over the uh, instrument really quick.
and we can take a look at the underside. So now, um, on the back of this instrument here, uh, we've got a lot of different kinds of screws, okay? So these ones right here, in kind of groups of two down the instrument, I don't remember how many there are, there may be 16. Um, those hold uh, the action down. We're gonna take those out later. Don't mess with that right now. Uh, what we want right now are to take the screws out that are not in raised enclosures. So on my keyboard, there are three. Now I've seen online that um, some people say that Nord Electro has only one of these, this screw right here. Now that's not true with my keyboard. I'm not sure if this is like a weird modification somebody made to it, um, but it seems like it's stock. There's these two screws here hold down this part um, that is really important uh, to hold this top half of the instrument down. You'll see it's a little bracket on the inside. So here we need to take out a total of three screws. So it's kind of hard to do this and hold the phone. But um, just get this screw out here. And make sure that you're actually putting these somewhere where you'll find them again. Don't make that mistake. It's a good um, habit when you're messing around with your keyboard and taking it apart. Okay, so these screws are out. And then we've got this screw over here. So, with these screws out, um, we're now ready to uh, open the instrument. So now, hopefully if I've done everything right, this um, top red part should be able to like lift up like this. Okay, so you're gonna take both sides and do this. I'm gonna put the phone down briefly so I can do this without breaking anything. Okay, so now you'll see um, if you grab it in the middle, this part just goes open. Now, very, very important, okay? This connector here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that first thing you do is uh, take this off. Now you'll notice here, there's this um, red uh, line on the side. That'll help you keep track of what you're doing. So um, loosen these things and this part will pop right out. So yeah, just make sure that you do this because if this thing falls on the floor it's definitely going to rip this off the board and then you're going to have way bigger problems that i don't know how to fix so you'll see here those were those two screws that held this bracket down um i'm going to now uh some people keep this thing attached um i find it a pain so now i'm going to completely undo these screws now on the side and take it off okay now that uh we've taken off all the screws we can take this part off and we're sure that everything's disconnected make sure that you're able to put this somewhere where you won't accidentally walk on it if you take a break. And trust me on that one. Okay, so now we've got this open. Um, our next task is like going to be um, getting access to all of the contacts. So you'll see here, I'll try to wheel the computer a little closer here. If you look into the keyboard right here, you'll see one of these bubble contacts right here. So underneath each each key in the instrument um, is one of those bubble contacts. And so uh, we're going to need to take this out to be able to, to work on it. Okay, our next step now is to take out these 16 screws over here that hold the action down. Now, and this is really important, make sure that you do this one step. Leave it attached by a couple of screws on each side, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay, now I'm going to start unscrewing um, things from here. And these screws are the only thing that are holding the action down. Now, if you take out all 16 of these at once, the uh, keyboard part is going to fall onto the floor. Uh, and with it, it's going to take a lot of things that are connected to the circuit board that you do not want to break. Okay, that's going to like pull out the ribbon and you're going to be screwed. So make sure that you only take out, like right now I'm going to be especially safe because the um, keyboard is actually surprisingly heavy and um, you want to have more than just your hand holding it if, if you're paranoid about something happening. Um, so I'm going to take out these screws on the side and I'll show you why I'm using a piano bench to, to do this here.
Okay, so like I mentioned, we've taken out all except four of these screws to the bottom. There are some down here. There's two screws that I've left, the two edge screws. And on the other side, I've also left these two edge screws. So now I'm using a piano bench for my workspace here because I can easily get underneath the piano and take out these two screws from each side. This is really important because if you have the keyboard upright when you're taking these screws out, this is just going to fall out and uh, it's really difficult to hold in with one hand actually. So definitely do it this way. Okay, get underneath here on this side and take out these two screws. And those out of the way, this part will come up. Now be super, super careful when you do this because this is also attached with some uh, ribbon cables here. Now the red ribbon cable, this one with the uh, red line down its side, um, is for the treble register of the instrument. Take this one out. Take the bass out also. B for bass. It's a blue line for the bass register down the side. Now, with this free, we can really easily take this out. So now, um, use a smaller screwdriver than you've been using for the rest to take these parts off. Uh, we're going to start with the bass register, actually, this side. You'll notice that this is in two sections. So this entire thing above middle C is a section and below is a section. So uh, we're going to start with the base. Now using a really, really, and remember use a hand tool, you're not using an electric screwdriver here. Um, just take out, uh, I think there's 18 screws here. So we'll take these out and then we can see uh, the bubble contracts strips. Okay, with these screws out, um, this part's just going to come up on its own. Okay? So now um, you can see here, um, for every note down here, uh, we have a contact strip. So it's actually easy to see um, what's what if you remember where things are. So remember, this goes into the instrument like this. Okay? So we know that the note that's all the way on this side is going to be the B below middle C. Okay, now if memory serves correctly, um, this note actually is not even on the instrument. Um, there's like a note on each side that, that's not used. So um, the first note on the Nord is a low F natural. So that's this one. And then F sharp. And then I don't know if you can see it, but F sharp is clearly messed up. It doesn't look the same as the other notes. And I think it's one of the ones that is actually uh, torn. So we're going to need to take this off and replace this. So let's look at how big of a section this is. This looks like a group of four notes on one strip. So what I'm actually going to do is really carefully and gently I'm going to get underneath and just pull these notes off. And they just pop out in the back like that. Okay. Now down here is where we can get dirt and grime and dust. Do not touch this if, if, uh, if you can help it. Um, all you want to do is get that get that contact on there and uh, put it back. So actually what I'm going to do now, which is something I probably should have done before I started, is I'm going to wash my hands to just make sure that I've got all the oil off my fingers that I, that I can get. And then I can um, go and cut the strip and put these on. Okay, so now on the Nord, um, all of the co bubble contacts are in um, groups of four and eight contacts. So since I took a strip of four off, I need to replace it with a strip of four. Now I've got an octave of notes here that I got from that website, and um, these are also grouped in four. So I'm actually going to make a cut here on this line, and I'm going to try to make it as cleanly as I can. If you were smart, you'd probably use an exacto knife for that. So okay, so I've got my four here, and it's ready to go back onto the instrument. Okay, so now that you've got a mechanical pencil, um, this is the frustrating part of the repair. So, we've got this part here, and it's got these um, long and short cylinders here. 
Some are thin, some are thick. They match up with these holes on the board, as you can guess. Um, we've got to thread it through like this while matching the alignment. So this part actually is a total pain um, because it's meant to hold really, really tightly um, to the board. So um, getting these threaded is a little bit of a challenge. Now you notice here there are these little um, sort of dimples in there, and those actually happen to perfectly fit a mechanical pencil. So what I do is I try to get the larger ones in first to hold it still, and then um, I go over with the mechanical pencil and uh, push everything in so it sits close. So this will probably definitely be fast forwarded as this always takes me the longest amount of time to do uh, when I'm putting things back down. Um, you can be actually pretty firm when you push. I mean, within reason. I mean, don't be stupid about it. But you do have to get these things down there. So um, uh, I would um, kind of grab it sort of firmly and push down. I mean, just don't, don't crack the board. If you're smart, you're not going to do that. But just remember that this is this is potentially uh, um, it's it's not as fragile as you would think, but um, I mean you can split it if you're if you're being stupid. So I've got th uh, about three in now, and as you can see, it, it kind of does take a while, and uh, it's a little bit hard because I'm keep looking back at the the camera, but I've almost got all four of these guys in. Okay. So cool. So we can see um, these four parts are coming through here, and you can kind of um, help wiggle them around with your fingers on this side so that these things are raised up. So now we've got the large ones in to hold it down. And now that we've worked these through, we have to get all of these small ones in. So we take the mechanical pencil in here, and we're going to uh, push it down to the board. And you'll see here, if you do it right, it lays flat. Just be careful that you won't screw anything up on there when you're doing this. Have the lead not be that long. Just push it flat through the holes, and you'll be fine. Okay, finally it's done. Okay, so now um, that I've done this, it goes back in the keyboard. So um, just give it a once over, make sure it's, it's flush, because that helps it not only make contact, but keep you know junk from getting in there through the keys. Uh, once it's flush, and you've checked your work, um, we put back all of those countless screws. So now, notice here, so these are like the... Uh, Springs are up here, tips of the keys are, are, are down here. Um, what we're going to do is we want to make sure that this red connector is lined up just the way before. So when it was put together before, this red part was lined up with this one. It's going to sit close and it's going to connect there. Make sure you get this right or you're going to get really weird behavior with your keyboard when you get it back together. So once you've got this and you're pretty sure that you've gotten it the way that it was when you uh, took it apart, uh, reinstall the screws. And again, make sure that you do not use a mechanical uh, screwdriver for this. Use, use, just a, use just a simple hand tool. Do not use an electric one. Um, these screws do not need to be uh, super tight. And you, What you really don't want to do is have um, the uh, electric screwdriver kind of tighten it way too much and then crack the board. That can easily happen. These do not need to be in tight, it just needs to hold it close. Okay, now that all the work is done on the base, um, we have to start working on the uh, treble. So, again, uh, there's a huge amount of screws here, but we're going to take it off and do the work the same way that we did the job on the base side. So, just remove the screws, put them somewhere safe, like a little baggy or something like that, and uh, we'll turn this over and do the final repair.
Okay, so now think about which note is out. So the F natural is here. So let's count groups of notes here. So we have, we have C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. So it's this one right here. Now just looking at it, I don't really see... Oh, actually, yeah. This, uh, this plastic is actually torn here, and it's probably going to be really difficult for you to see. But let's just take this off. Okay. So you see here, um, this note here, it just doesn't look the same as the other ones. It looks a little, it looks a little busted. Um, probably can't see it on here. I'm just imagining something's torn in a weird way. So um, I could only replace the group of four, but since I have a group of eight left over from uh, what I just cut, it just makes sense to use um, the rest of this strip. So um, taking this here, I'm going to repeat the same process I did in uh, the base register. So make sure it's aligned. So basically look at everything else on here and make sure that it matches. The, uh, the two bubbles aren't exactly the same. One's a little bit more recessed than the other. So um, we put it in here and then uh, we're going to get um, the larger um, kind of rods in first. So the way that I've found that works better is kind of wiggle it back and forth with um, on this side and then on the other side you can use um, your thumb to kind of move uh, this part back and kind of help it lock on the other side. So if it gets a grip over on the other side like this, um, you're in business and it's really a lot easier to get the rest of them in um, once you've gotten uh, uh, it just held there by a couple. So um, like so, just um, uh, getting it the larger ones threaded in a hole and then kind of assisting with your other hand to help pull it through once you're doing it. Again, this is the worst part of the repair and for me, I can never seem to get it right. Uh, it takes me a long time. I'll give you a little bit more detail on what I'm doing here. So basically, um, this leg has to go down here so what I'm going to do is first get this lined up with this hole here. And then as I'm pushing it through, on the other side here, as I bring it up, I'm going to try to grab it with my finger and pull it through. So as I'm moving this around, kind of wiggling it into place, um, my other finger on top of this is helping to um, push it and pull it through the hole and once you kind of have it um, in there it will sort of catch and uh, it will be really easy to pull it through. So you see it's starting to go and then as I move with my finger like this up I just pull it through and it's completely threaded. So I'm going to pull on all of these in turn to make sure it's sitting as flush as I can before I work on the smaller ones. Okay we look like we're in good shape. So using the mechanical pencil, you'll notice here this isn't saying flush yet. All these small ones have to get in too. And this one um, is a lot easier to do um, with a mechanical pencil I found um, to just drive these down to the holes. So line them up and then push them down. It takes a little bit of trial and error. I haven't really figured out a good system for doing this. But yeah, just push them down and then go over it with a mechanical pencil. And you'll start to see these two are now flush with the board right here. So basically line them up and then just work on down the board, getting them in place. Okay, so now I've gotten it so I can see all these things have come through here on this side. It looks like it's sitting as close as it can. It's time to replace this part now as well. And again, check this red part. Just make sure it's lined up with the other side. It should be closest to the kind of, uh, tips of the keys right here. And uh, screw in all the screws. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so now that all the screws are in, uh, we're going to reattach the jumper cables. So we're going to start with the red jumper cable. The one with the red stripe on the side is for the upper register. Put that one in right there. And then we're going to use the one for uh, the base register is going to... Okay, so now that all the uh, screws are back in uh, holding these things down to the instrument, we're going to put in the jumper cables again. So the one with the red stripe is for the upper register. Connect that one and then connect the one with the blue stripe, which is for uh, the base register. So um, with these back in, uh, we can carefully flip the keyboard down and align the keyboard so it sits in the holes here. It'll kind of like pop into place once you've got it. Now remember, I'm on the piano bench again, and my whole thing that I'm going to do is uh, replace these back in order um, that secures this as quickly as I can before I put in the other screws. So uh, the first two screws um, down this side, on the underside, I'm going to do first. Finding these holes, I'm going to attach these first. Um, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, but it should be pretty obvious. I'm just screwing in um, uh, the two screws all on the that are on the base side of the keyboard um, first, so that I can put the keyboard vertical without losing everything. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for the two screws that are the furthest to the treble side. So once these are in, Just tighten up to hold the keyboard flush. Um, you can uh, put the instrument on its side and get the 14 remaining screws put in. Okay, so we made sure that we didn't over tighten anything on the bottom. Those screws don't need to be in there super, uh, super tight. So um, just get them uh, close enough, and then we're going to replace the top part. Now, I have to do something special for my keyboard because I mentioned I had those uh, strip screws over here. Um, but what I've found is the best way to um, work on this is to try to make it so that you can uh, turn the top over um, comfortably and, and flip it. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the side screws that are closest to the rear of the instrument first um, so that I can use the top like a hinge. So On my keyboard, I have to um, use a screw and nut to keep this together because of what a repair person did to this. And get it medium 
tightness about because you want to be able to move it up and down. Do the same thing on the other side. Attach the side screw. To this one right here, rear base register screw. Okay, so this is tight enough that it's not really going to go anywhere, but I can still uh, rotate the instrument. So um, that leaves the reattachment of the remaining one jumper cable. Turn this so you can see it a little better. Okay, this cable just goes to this socket right here. I'll move this in here. So this one goes right here into this black socket and I'm going to uh, basically put this in here and then once you push these two locking teeth come in around it. So now this thing can start to go down so I'm going to tighten this nut, which you won't have to do on your Nord, only on mine because it's already a little messed up. And then this side will be able to um, go down, all right? Okay. And then we're going to um, put back the remaining screws on this side. We'll just do it in a slightly different order than we did uh, the first side. Okay, now time for the five remaining rear screws. Now lastly, we've got those three screws on the underside of the keyboard to get the two that hold that bracket down and then uh, that one other support screw. Um, so just screw the bracket down with these two and you'll all be set to go. Okay, now the moment of truth. Um, we're going to plug this back in and uh, see if it's going to make sound. Okay, Got the instrument booting up here. Good, okay, we've got sound. Everything got hooked up back. Just do a chromatic scale. Yep, everything seems to be working. The F is fixed, it works at all the velocities. The slow G flat is fixed too. Um, so this is good. Um, I'm going to uh, pull up uh, main stage and just make sure that everything is working correctly. But it seems like the F is going great. It's working in this G flat. Okay, now I've got it open in main stage, just making sure I've got range of stuff between, yep, and between 127 and 1 for velocity. Um, this keyboard is finally working again. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Leave a comment if I can help in any way or if you have questions about the steps. Uh, and good luck fixing your keyboard. It's, um, <laughs>